Hey there, Sam. You see, a lot of web apps today have some sort of real-time features integrated with them. For example, when you're chatting with someone in a messaging app, you can see whether they're typing or not, or whether they're online or not. Or even when you're using a collaborative app like Google Docs, you could see the cursor positions of your peers and the text they have added to the document in real time. And now the big question is, what is the voodoo magic that powers these real-time features? Well, to answer this question, let's first consider our options. We could get this to work using HTTP. Let's use a chat app as an example. Let's say we have a person A here, and another person B on the right, and our app server sitting in the middle. Now A wants to send a message to B. So A go ahead and type in something in the Messenger app, and now practically speaking, on B's screen, B should see the status of A as typing. And now one of the many ways to get this to work in HTTP is for A to send a request to the server that would update the state of the current conversation record between A and B in the database. And now in order for B to get the latest status update of the current conversation, B needs to send in a HTTP request to the server once every few seconds to get the latest update on a conversation. Otherwise, there's no other way for B to check if A is typing or not. This method used by B is called polling, and it is far from being efficient. Why? Well, because HTTP is rather slow for real-time communication. Depending on the location of the app server, and also the associated logic in the API endpoint, a HTTP request could take up to a few hundred milliseconds or even a few seconds in some cases. This delay is certainly not suitable for a real-time app. Secondly, HTTP request is rather heavy. Every HTTP request contains a header and also a body. And other than a request body, the HTTP request also contains cookies and also other metadata about the request. And the same goes with the HTTP response sent back by the server. In a real-time app, there'll be a lot of messages coming back and forth between the client and also the server. If we're using HTTP to facilitate the real-time communication, someone's got to pay for the bandwidth overhead associated with these HTTP requests. And trust me, it won't be cheap. So what's a better solution then to create a real-time app in contrast to HTTP? And this is exactly where WebSockets comes into the picture. We needed something that's fast, that's lightweight, and supported by the browser. And WebSocket ticks all of these boxes. But before we go on any further, let's first understand what is WebSocket. Well, WebSocket is another way for computers to talk to each other. And just like HTTP, we can use WebSocket to send and receive data from a web server. However, the main difference between WebSocket and HTTP is that in WebSocket, the connection between a client and a server is persisted and maintained, while in HTTP, the connection ends as soon as the server sends back a HTTP response. Now, the persistent connection in WebSocket gives it a huge advantage in building a real-time app. Because now, if the client or the server wants to send each other a message, they don't need to start a new connection, but instead they can just send the message through the existing connection. There is no need to re-establish the connection and go through the authentication processes again. We only need to do it for one time when we first establish the connection. And that is the reason on why WebSocket is much faster than HTTP when transmitting messages. Now, there are two common patterns when building app with WebSockets. The first one is what we call the pub-sub pattern or publisher-subscriber pattern. In a pub-sub pattern, there's always one publisher and a lot of subscribers. The server is usually the publisher and there'll be a lot of clients subscribed to this publisher. When the server wants to send out or publish a message, the message will be sent out to all of the subscribers. This is a one-way communication method where the server can only send out data and the client can only receive. You can see the pub-sub patterns in a lot of financial apps where they are streaming real-time financial data on a price chart or a candlestick chart. The pub-sub pattern can also be used to stream live video data where all the clients will receive streaming data from the camera on the server. So if you want to build a video streaming platform like Twitch.tv or a monitoring service like a CCTV system for your home, you might want to consider PubSub when designing your app. The second common pattern is something called RPC, which stands for Remote Procedure Code. In contrast to the PubSub pattern, which can only send data in one way, RPC is a two-way communication protocol, and it is very similar to HTTP. 
accept the fact that we're using WebSocket and the connection between the client and server is maintained. So here's how it works. First of all, the client will establish a connection with the server. Once the connection is opened and persisted, the client will send a request through the connection to the server. The server will receive the request and process the request by running some logic on the server side and send back a reply to the client. This is very much similar to HTTP request and response where the client and server are exchanging data. The request in RPC could contain a body where it contains all the data needed by the server to run the process on the server side. And similarly, the reply sent back by the server could also contain a body to be used by the client later on. Once the client received a reply, the client could go ahead and read the body of the reply and proceed to do some other processing. And if needed, the client could send another request to the server through the WebSocket connection. And the process repeats itself. And by looking at how RPC works, we can kind of understand why is it called remote procedure code. Procedure is another name for functions. And here, we're really executing a remote functions on the server by sending out a request to the server. And the server will go ahead and send back the result of the function in the form of reply. And as I mentioned just now, RPC is a two-way communication protocol. The client can send data to the server through request, and the server can send back data through reply. However, due to the nature of RPC, the data transmitted in this WebSocket connection can only happen with one client only, in contrast to PubSub where the data is sent out to multiple clients at the same time. A typical application that uses RPC is a chat messaging app. In fact, in a chat app, it could be a combination of RPC and PubSub working together. Here's one of the many strategies that you could use to build a chat app. Let's say we are in a chat group. There's one server and four users. Now Alice wants to send a message to her friends. What Alice could do is to make an RPC connection to the server and send a request to ask the server to record her message in a chat group. Once the server has saved the message, the server would then broadcast the message to everyone else in the room using the top sub pattern. If someone else in the room wanted to send a message to the group, then they'll make another RPC connection to the server and the process repeats. Isn't that neat? Using WebSockets in your app in the right place could really make your app runs faster than using Bolt. But it doesn't mean that you should use WebSocket for everything from now on. WebSocket has its own overhead and it could be quite complicated to set up a proper WebSocket server. Regardless, WebSocket is a promising technology that can really improve your user experience by bringing in real-time features to your web app. Alright, key takeaways for this lesson. WebSocket is a communication protocol to transmit data between computers, where it's commonly used in real-time applications. In contrast to HTTP, WebSocket persists and maintains its connection with the server, so the subsequent data transmission between the server and the client will be lightning fast. And that makes WebSocket an ideal candidate to transmit data in a real-time application. There are two common WebSocket app patterns, PubSub and RPC, which stands for Publisher Subscriber and Remote Procedure Code, respectively. PubSub involves one server that broadcasts messages to multiple clients. It is commonly seen in financial app where there's a need to stream real-time price data. RPC is very similar to HTTP where the client will send a request and expect a reply from the server. RPC can be used in messaging app. That's it for now and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.